besides artists, there are also uh, uh, teachers giving regular workshops and masterclasses in photography. And I would like to invite them to come to the stage and give their vision. Anna Bloomberg and Oliver Shannerin. I want to test this. Is that working? Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Thanks, Fred. That was an incredible beginning. <laughs> really set the pace. I'm going to slow it down. <laughs> People in trouble, laughing, pushed to the ground. Soldiers leaning, soldiers reaching, women sweeping. Balloons escaping, coffins descending, boys standing, grieving, chair balancing, children smoking, embracing, creatures barking, cars burning, helicopters hovering, faces, human figures, shapes, birds, structures left standing and falling. Girl looking. These images all come from the Belfast Exposed archive, which is um, a collection of 14,000 black and white contact strips like you're looking at now, held in um, 23 Donegal Street in Belfast. Um, these pictures are taken both by professional photojournalists and amateurs. Um, and they show images, as you've seen, of, of conflict, traditional kind of professional images of conflict, as well as the stuff of ordinary life, people kissing, um, life going on. We were invited to come in and reply to this archive, and we decided the only way to do it as such outsiders was to actually look at the archive mechanically rather than w in terms of the content. And to speak architecturally, the way you'd look at an image is in plan. Um, and you'd look at the content, and we turned it on its side in section and actually looked at the layer above the image. And what we found, first of all, was the series of very common blue paper little stickers. And we realized that over the 30 years the archive existed, um, many archivists and many photo editors had come in, and this was their, their marks of selection, which means that the act of selection ironically led to a process of censorship because whatever was underneath those images hadn't been seen for the 30 years that it was open to the public. And um, what that led to was a kind of, we created a kind of score which determined what, what part of the image that we would print up in the end. So the, these images, and I think as Fred demonstrated, um, are evidence that conflicts are full of witnesses, different kinds of witnesses, um, soldiers, bystanders, civilians, journalists, uh, unmanned drones, even bullets sometimes have cameras attached to them. Um, Adam and I were in Afghanistan in 2008 when we were, we were embedded with the British Army. Um, and that was a really strange experience, um, being embedded. Being embedded is this contradictory thing where the, uh, the military give you access to the theater of war, uh, to this theater of danger. But at the same time, you give them access to you. Um, they control the kind of pictures that you take. And they're very strict about the kind of images that can be produced in, a, in the theater of war. You can't photograph, obviously, dead bodies. You can't photograph in, injured soldiers, or even the effect of enemy fire on buildings uh, or, or vehicles. So really, none of the signs of war can be photographed. And you, so we experienced this form of quite subtle form of, of censorship. Um, and while we were there, um, we encountered what, something that we'd never heard of. It was the combat uh, shooter. And this is, a combat, this is one of the combat shooters, um, which is a, a particularly troubled form of a witness in a war zone. Um, that it's a very conflicted figure. These are soldiers, and at the same time, they're photographers. Um, they carry a, an M16 weapon, as well as a Nikon D5. Um, and they have this very difficult job of, of documenting the thing that they're also engaged with. These two are fascinating. The one on the left is stills, and the one on the right is moving image. Um, and one of the questions that we have in terms of what's next is, is there a role for the guy on the left anymore? Um, 
The truth is that these two technologies of weapons and photography have been intrinsically linked since the inception of photography. So a very brief, um, brief history lesson, but in the 1860s, photographs were exposed on emulsion, which was actually the byproduct of manufacturing of explosives. Um, the mechanism of some of the early cameras were directly based on the mechanisms of the Colt revolver. And later, the workings of the film camera were inspired by the technology of the machine gun. So, as Oli said, the technologies of war and representation have been extricably linked morally and technologically. Um, an image most of us are familiar with, Roger Fenton's In the Valley of the Shadow of Death, taken in 1855, often quoted as the first war photograph. Um, it's this war, the Crimean War, that marked a real shift from spectators who were co-present alongside soldiers um, to something more organized for commer commercial mass consumption. Some might say that this is actually the first media war. Um, and we would argue that ever since then, the battle has been as much about how things are represented and seen as they are about land, resources, ideology, the traditional motivation for conflict. And um, people like Retort, a Bay Area collective, and many others have argued that certainly since 9-11, the so-called war on terror is more an, a war of images, this kind of genocidal pursuit for images in reply for 9-11, than they are about the kind of um, traditional notion of, of what you can achieve in a conflict. This is a picture from a book by Bertolt Brecht called The War Primer. Um, and Bertolt Brecht was one of the first people to really recognize this complex relationship between images and war, and also the complexity of the status of the witness in, in a war zone. Um, Brecht began collecting news clippings like this one in the 20s and pasting them into his workbooks. Um, and then it was later in the 40s when he was in exile in Sweden that he started to write a series of poems that he attached to each of these clippings. Um, it's a fairly well-known publication. Um, and the, the poems are interesting. They're, they all follow the same structure. They're, it's called a quatrain. It's a four-line poem. Each sentence has ten syllables, and the two first sentences rhyme, and the second two sentences rhyme. Um, and what Brecht was trying to do, Brecht uh, wrote eloquently about the problem of looking at images of war, um, that these seemingly obvious and simple images were actually much more complex and he described, it, he described them as a sort of hieroglyphics in need of decoding. Uh, in case you can't read that, well, just read out a couple, because you probably can't see, but... Alas, poor Yorick of the burnt-out tank, upon an axle shaft your head is set. Your death by fire was for the Dome Bank, to whom your parents still remain in debt. Like one who dreams that the road ahead is steep, I know the way fate has prescribed for us. That narrow way towards the precipice, just follow, I can find it in my sleep. Before you join the great assault, I see, you peer around to spot the enemy. Was that the French or your own sergeant who was lurking there to keep his eye on you? And so we put him up against the wall, a mother's son, a man like we had been, and shot him dead. And then to show you all what came of him, we photographed the scene. A cloud of smoke told us that they were here. They were the sons of fire, not of light. They came from where they came out of darkness. Where did they go? Into eternal light. We are currently working on a new project entitled The War Primer 2. This book will span the war years that we've just li lived through and still living through from 9-11 till today. Um, likewise, our War Primer will for now will present photo epigrams along with recent and ongoing conflict images in an attempt to make sense of some of the hieroglyphics that we'll show you now. But, and it's a big but, if Brecht was today making his war primer, would he be sitting in front of a series of newspapers with a pair of scissors cutting them out? We think no, he'd probably be on the internet, he'd be scouring YouTube, collecting clips. Um, as he famously said, don't start with the good old things, but with the bad new ones. So in this spirit, 
um, we'd like to show you a series, just four videos that are likely to be part of our War Primer 2, which is still an unforeseen form. <laughs> 